Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I would like to welcome you to the Sunday Book Review. The Sunday Book Review is the series where I discuss books which impact the compliance practitioner, the legal professional, and the business professional. I hope you will enjoy this episode. January 19, 2020, the New York Review of Books edition. Today, all of my selections come from the New York Review of Books, January 16, 2020 edition. First up, Grinnell, American environmental pioneer in his restless drive to save the West by John Talaferro. With the Trump administration's effort to privatize or indeed obliterate many of the institutions of our public life, including an unrelenting tax, attack on the vast complex of public lands that dates back more than uh, a century. It's interesting to look at John Grinnell, one of the most prominent early American conservationists, as one of the figures who remind us that the 19th century America was a fairly small place, especially at its upper reaches, but more importantly, how that generation understood that future generations would benefit from conservation and saving some of the most gorgeous parkland in America. Too bad we seem to have lost that. Next up, from a little more ancient history, we look at Domino, the women who made Imperial Rome by Guy de la Baudière. For 99 years, a single family ruled Rome. Five of its members in turn controlled the government and the army. But this was not a monarchy, none ruled by right, and the institutions of the old Roman Republic remained in place, the consuls, the Senate, and even elections. This particular regime owed its origins to one man who, as a teenager, abandoned the quiet life of the Roman gentry to take up arms against the assassins of Julius Caesar. This, of course, was Augustus Caesar. He governed the Roman state for 46 years through a series of Republican appointments, and at his death, it was actually the female side of the family which continued this tradition. So this is an interesting, uh, I wouldn't say counterfactual history, historical look, but certainly a different one, focusing on the women uh, who were the power behind the scenes in the first hundred years of the Roman Empire. Next up, someone who I had not known really anything about, and uh, that person is Fritz Zwicky, the outcast genius who unmasked the universe and really the power of morphological thinking. Morphological thinking is not just a way of thinking, it's a way of life, according to Zwicky, attempting to realize the genius of each individual in each race. The prime directive is to generalize all problems before drawing fallacious conclusions. In practice, this means keeping one's mind open to all possible solutions, no matter how seemingly impractical. Not only is this thought process, but this book is a great book for compliance practitioners to consider. Most particularly, morphological thinking will help you, I think, uh, create a more robust compliance program, but also give you more ways to make your business process around your compliance program more effective. And we conclude with a new biography of Charles de Gaulle. Uh, De Gaulle was the seminal figure in France in the 20th century, uh, fought in World War I and World War II, obviously became president of the Fifth Republic, came back after the uh, 1968 riots to have uh, his greatest majority ever. So it's important for the French psyche, I think, for Americans to understand De Gaulle, understand what he meant to France, and understand the uh, corporate... Catholicism that he brought as a business strategy, which in many ways informs the France business, French business community up until today. It's a fascinating look at uh, really one of the towering figures, both politically and militarily, from the 20th century who may not get enough uh, play in the United States. I know you will enjoy it, and I know you'll find the history part of it fascinating. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Sunday Book Review. It is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you'll check in with me next week.